Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to draw the Lewis dot structure for iodine trifluoride. So here we go. Uh, iodine trifluoride is going to be IF3. Okay, and that's going to give us seven valence electrons from the iodine plus three fluorines each with seven valence electrons of their own for a total of 28 valence electrons okay and we can go ahead and subtract out the largest multiple of 8 which is going to be 24 which leaves us with 4 electrons divide that by 2 and gives us 2 and since 24 is equal to 8 times 3 that means that this is going to be an AX3 E2 structure, meaning there's a central atom surrounded by three peripheral atoms, and the central atom has two non-bonding pairs of electrons on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this structure. So we have the iodine in the center, surrounded by the three fluorines. Okay, and we can go ahead and single bond all the fluorines to the central iodine, and fill in the octets on each of the surrounding fluorines. Okay, now we also have to add in these two non-bonding pairs of electrons to, to the central iodine, iodine. So here we go, one pair there and a second pair there. All right, and that's going to end up being our final structure, but let's just go ahead and verify that by checking the formal charges. So the formal charge on the central iodine is going to be the seven valence electrons brought in minus one, two, three single bonds minus one two three four non-bonding electrons for a formal charge of zero and then the formal charge on each of the fluorines is going to be the seven valence electrons brought in for each one minus a single bond on each fluorine minus two four six non-bonding electrons on each fluorine as well for a formal charge of zero and you multiply that by three because there are three of them you add all these up and it gives you a formal overall formal charge of zero, which is what we need because this is not a charged particle, okay? Um, now looking at the shape, when you have AX3E2 type of structure, the shape is going to be called T-shaped. And when you have a T-shaped structure, the bond angles are going to be approximately 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, in terms of hybridization, looking at the central atom, we have one, two, three, four, five electron groups or possible bonding sites. So we need five hybrid orbitals. So that means we're going to need sp3d hybrid, 1s, 3ps, and 1d. So that's a total of five orbitals. Okay, and because of these two non bonding pairs of electrons, that's going to make this a polar compound. Um, that is pretty much it for this one. If you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.